Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. And what is this video about? Well, I shall tell you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with some texture distortion in Max MSP using jit.gl.pix, uh, otherwise known as the gen environment. i um, only really been playing around with gen for the last year or so. I recently put out um, those NetFX um, Max for Live devices, which were all done in gen audio. Um, and now I'm trying to get better at doing it in textures on the GPU in the gen environment because it's um, it's fun. And uh, so there's some stuff I still don't really know what I'm doing, but that's OK, because this is an experimental YouTube channel where we try things. And if they're great, then we celebrate. And if they're crap, then we just delete it and try something else. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my webcam in and I'm going to go into jit.gl.pix here. Uh, which is actually open in uh, this window here. So you can see I've created a little workspace for myself. I'm just going to choose snap to grid. Yes, that's nice. OK. And so, yeah, I'm going to. So I've created my uh, world rendering context. I've created my jit.grab, which is going to give me my webcam. And uh, the jit.geo.pix is where I'm going to be working uh, for this, um, this algorithm. I guess you'd call it an algorithm. Yeah. Seems a bit weird to think that I would be making videos about coding my own texture algorithms. I didn't think I would really ever get into this sort of stuff. But anyway, and then that is going, the output of that is going out as a texture into this jit.gl.video plane with the transform reset set to two so that it uh, matches the um, uh, whatever you call the aspect ratio of this floating window here. So let's uh, let's do it. Um, OK. Put that Put that back in. Right, so actually, I'll just connect uh, this jit dot jit. <laughs> That's me looking a bit surprised and confused. Um, yeah, that's actually me there. Right, okay, so this is a bit weird. I'm going to have to try and not look at myself whilst I'm working. So, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the sample operator and I'm going to give it the bound mode mirror and now the image is gone okay that's fine so um what this it basically allows us to do well i think it just basically allows us to sample incoming pixels and screw around with them i'm not 100 sure but um in order to sort of uh get started with that i'm going to take um well first of all, i'm going to take the normalized coordinates of this incoming uh image right now so normalized would mean that it's going from well actually zero down here to one on the x axis and zero down here to one on the y axis. So, and I'm going to swizz the x axis and the y axis independently and then pack them back into a vector and send that vector in to our sample, which will basically do nothing to the image at all. However, if we drop in a little bit of maths here, perhaps multiply the x-axis uh, dimensions by two, oh, then we get this, so this mirror, and we get this mirror type thing. And because I've got the bound mode set to mirror, then it actually is a mirror, you see? Um, whereas if I had it something set to like a wrap, um, then we just get like a duplicate. Um, there's also clamp as well, which kind of does this type of thing, sort of like that slit scan thing that you sometimes see on Instagram. People do this stuff, don't they? Um, but we want to use mirror because I'm going to make a weird hall of mirrors. So, yeah, you can see that as I've multiplied the X uh, axis by two, we now have two versions of the X axis. If I was to multiply that by four, We'd have four and the same for the y axis. There we go. So now there's like this little mirror mirror world of, of me there. Um, so that's kind of the starting point, but it's not particularly very distorted, is it? It's just uh, me duplicated eight times, well, 16 times. Who wants to see that? Um, also, if we take the signed normalized coordinates of that, that would be like going from minus one to one with zero in the middle. So if we do that, then actually we kind of get 
twice the amount because the because uh, we're actually going from zero to uh, sorry minus one to zero to one on each um, each uh, axis. Yeah, so um, I'll stick with yeah I'll stick with the stick with the norm. Okay, so well basically. I've been experimenting with all of these different operators in Gen, just dropping them in. I don't understand how some of them work. I've just been plugging things into other things. Um, and it's been quite good fun. So I might just zoom in a little bit more. That's a bit too far, okay. So I could start by using a sphere operator on the x-axis. And then we kind of get this type of thing. If I maybe not multiply that so much, maybe by two. So, in fact, let's just ah. So you can kind of see there now how yes, you can see how it's mirror. It's it's bent. It's bendy. Oh, there we go. Look. Yes, already I'm much more handsome. Look at that. Hi. So uh, you can see why I was going for a hall of mirrors thing. So that like um, the actual uh, kind of dis the distortion is happening because it's doing a sphere equation on those numbers coming in. So I could take a copy of that, put, apply that to the y-axis and we get sort of something like this. So you can see that we've got this kind of crazy mirroring stuff going on. I, I never thought I'd really get into a bit of, be able to wrap my head around all of this, but it's actually kind of it, a lot easier than I thought. You just got to, you just got to jump in and mess about. So we can obviously now multiply that by a large amount, say 16, and we get oh, a very, very, well, yeah, we get that. <laughs> <laughs> and we can sort of just do these things like multiply everything by, uh, or we, we can multiply it by half. And um, so, whoa, that was good. What just happened there? Yeah, look at that. And now I have like a, <laughs> like a round head. I've got a, well, we all have round heads, but I mean, I've got, oh my God, I'm getting carried away. I'm too excited. Oh, what, what happened there? Where did that one? It doesn't look the same anymore. What did I do? Let's try this one. Okay, well, yeah, I'm just getting a bit carried away anyway. So there are all these types of fun things that you can do. We could try the try putting it through a torus equation. We get more stuff like this. Let's take that out. Delete. Hello. Hi. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Let's put that back in. Oh, go back in there. Go on. Go back in. Right, okay. Let's take a copy of that. Let's put the torus on the... Oh, look at my neck. That's gross. Put it on the uh, x-axis. Yeah, so we're starting to get some very sort of weird kind of um, mirror stuff going on here. Image distortion on on the x and y-axis. So, um, yeah. <sighs> Let's have a quick drink. Okay, where can we go from here? Well, actually, there are loads of other things that we can do. Um, let's uh, just try to think here. So we can actually, um, yeah, we can offset. Where do we do put the offset? Let's let's create a plus offset. And the console is going to give me a whole load of warnings because I've specified I've declared a parameter without an actual parameter. So I'm going to go param offset. This will now be available to the outside of the patch. Um, and so now if I go down here in my, my main patch here, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, I can create a, uh, well, actually I can just go to the jit.pix and I can find my newly created, where is it? There it is. So now I'm going to, whoa. Okay, so now I'm kind of adding uh, to the x-axis and the y-axis, which creates this sort of movement. Um, that's fine. So I'm going to create a jit.time here. And I'm just gonna plug that into my offset and that's going a little bit fast. So let's say at speed 0.1. Okay, that's a little bit better. So we're kind of basically um, adding to those dimensions, uh, which then also gets fed into this um, 
torus uh, opera equation, whatever, whichever one you want to use. There are some other ones like cone, um, torus and sphere are kind of the most fun, most distorted. So, but actually, um, let's maybe just use a modulo here to keep that. I'm not sure this will make a huge amount of difference, but let's just do it anyway. Let's just modulo that to keep that those numbers within uh, zero to one. So it's basically just going from zero to one and then back down to zero again, even though it says three, it's actually just going zero to one. But, um, oh, it's not really looking quite what I was expecting. Maybe I'm gonna put, put that off without making it. Oh, hello, that's interesting. So yeah, this, you can, you can, you just keep experimenting. You can get these weird type of like, so some of them are like, it's like a collage of various versions of my distorted face. Okay. Okay, I'm actually going to trash the modulos. That was kind of that was kind of pointless. So, um, okay, let's leave that there. Let's have a look at if you if you go to this gen operators thing here, you can ping out this menu, and there's loads and loads and loads and loads of stuff here. Um, let's have a look at sampling. Well, we use the sample. Where are the other ones that I was looking at? Was it vector? Yes, let's try and reflect. So I'm going to use the reflect operator, reflect. And I don't entirely understand what's going on here. Normal specifying reflection, okay, and vector to reflect. Let's just plug it in and see, see what it does. Okay, not very much, probably because we need to put something in this input. So what could we put in? Well, let's just put in the original. The, whoa, what just happened? What is this? <laughs> oh, that's scary. That's so cool. Look at that. So it's reflecting the swizzed X and Y coordinates that are being offset into a torus calculation are reflecting off the original input of the camera. Look at that. That is messed up. That's so cool. All right. Okay. That was fun. But let's take... Um, let's copy all of this and instead we'll take the signed normalized uh, coordinates of the input matrix and apply it through a different calculation. Let's use the sphere for this one and the sphere for this one. And let's use this, put that into the reflect. Ooh, yeah, this is what it's all about. Look at that. What fun. So maybe we can multiply, can we like multiply this an extreme amount? Let's multiply it by 10. Well, that's too much. Okay, let's try three. Okay, let's make a parameter to multiply some of this stuff. Um, so guess I'm gonna take that out. Let's put that in there instead. Where would be a good place to multiply some of this? Uh, let's put a clip. Let's multiply here. Let's let's try with this. First of all, we're going to make a clip so that it doesn't go. So we're going. We're on normalized coordinates. So it goes zero to one. Um, let's put a couple of clips in here, and then I'm going to clip here. But this one's going to go minus one one ping that in there and let's just see if we can multiply this so even though if i multiply it's going to clip it let's see what we get oh that's interesting okay let's try these ah look at that what's going on here whoa that's interesting what about without the clip? Let's take the clip out. <laughs> okay, let's take all the clips out. Maybe clipping was a, was a silly idea. Okay, so why don't we um, actually say that these are all going to be controlled by the parameter, which we'll call malt. Kind of like a kind of like a gain control. So let's say malt for this one and malt for you and malt for you. If I suppose like 
we wanted more control, we could have a separate parameter for each um, axis, but I don't want to spend too long fiddling with parameters. Right, so where's my new malt parameter? Where are you? There it is. Okay, so now in our top patcher, we can multiply. Yeah, cool. So we can actually just apply a little bit. There we go. That's kind of nice. Just a little bit of weird mirror distortion. Fun. I'm having a nice time. I'm going to drink. Hopefully it's uh, so distorted that YouTube doesn't pick up the beer that I'm drinking and um, try and do me for advertising or something. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> this is fun. But I'm actually going to swap this reflect operator for a refract operator. Refract. See what we get then. Ah, oh, kind of nothing. All right. So what's this? Refraction index. So... All right, again, let's just take in the original. Whoa, that's so cool. How would we, um, do we specify how much we want to refract with an argument? Sorry, 0 0.5. Can't really see what's going on. Let's multiply it a little bit more. I think there's something going on in there. Refraction index. I'm guessing that's zero to one. Let's try two. No, let's try zero. <laughs> okay, I learned nothing there. That's fine. I should have just done a little bit more research. <clears throat> so what if we, so we, we've been sending these, um, these numbers here. So these are streams of numbers and we've been sending them into uh, these torus and sphere operators to calculate those numbers on the equation of a sphere. We can actually do that to an entire lists of vectors. So if I took a copy of this, I can ping that in there. Um, I can do the same for this, whoops. I can do the same, say, for this one. Take a copy of that, ping that in there and um, get even more distortion. Whoa, yeah, look at that. It's pretty cool. So if we multiply it by not much, it's kind of a, fun and we can sort of go extreme so yeah we could have maybe made multiplication parameters for each axis yeah fun what else could we do maybe let's uh rather than plus let's have these ones go minus so the yeah starting to look a bit bubbly Ooh, okay. Yeah. Look at that. Kind of like. Oh, it's interesting. It's kind of like we've just made our own kind of bubbly liquid algorithm. All looks a bit Terminator Two. <laughs> kind of like it. Yeah, that's fun. Well, so there you go. That wasn't particularly difficult, was it? I don't think so. Um. So yeah. We did a little bit of texture processing in gen, which wasn't that difficult, I don't think. Really, once you get your head around, you know, the concepts of vectors, working with vectors between minus one and one or zero and one, it all starts to kind of make perfect sense. 0.5 is going to be the middle. If I was working with like cell dimensions, you'd have to query, I guess, the, the, the size of your input matrix in order to be able to find where halfway is. But if you're doing it with zero to one or minus one to one, um, it all seems a little bit more intuitive and you can make some pretty crazy stuff pretty quickly. Look at that. What about if I, let's maybe do a comparison here. Let's say greater than 0 0.5, see what we get. Woo, <laughs> what's that? What have I done? Let's try 0 0.9. No, whoa. <laughs> okay, let's try 0 0.1. Yeah, look at that. Cool. Let's put it, let's put this one over here as well. Let's put one in there like that. What we get? Oh, okay. 
Now we've just <laughs> still kind of cool though. How did I do that? Why is that happening? What? It, let's put it before. Let's put it before the torus. No. <laughs> let's try a higher value. Zero point seven five. Oh, well, we've still made some interesting shapes, some eggs. We've made some eggs. How oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, this is all fun. Very fun stuff. Some weird stuff is going on right now. Um, we can also kind of do that thing we were doing earlier. If we now add this to the input of the camera, we can get my original. So you can sort of see there I'm waving my hands. There's There I am up against the mic. Psychedelic, man. I'm tripping out. Okay, well, I guess I'll leave it there. So, yeah, maybe um, some more on this in future videos. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. If you like, if you, if you like this video, hit like, subscribe, um, support me on Patreon if you want, and you can download everything my entire life. I'm going to go and put this on Patreon now uh, so that my devoted, kind followers can play around with this and have a nice time. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.